Welcome to Rick's Scale Model Fix and another kit review. This time it's Hobby Boss's brand new EA 18G Growler in 148 scale. And this box is absolutely huge and it has filled the A2 cutting mat that you use as a photo background. Box top tour, it's going to be difficult with this one I'm afraid folks, but nonetheless we've got some lovely artwork there, uh, Growler in flight. On the box side the six marking options included, some of them very colourful and the bottom right one is the one that drew me to this kit and also the fact that I've got the Meng offering in the E and F guys so I wanted to see how this stacks up against that one and we've got some CAD artwork there on the other side of the box. Other side of the box we've got the marking options and the weapons included in the kit along with a small photo etch part. And on the top of the box it's pretty much a repetition of the box top artwork and your number for this one is 85814. So it's a bit difficult to manhandle this kit around the cutting mat and film it at the same time so I've just removed the box top. Now this kit retails in the UK, I think I got this from Creative Models which offered fantastic service, it was ordered Friday and arrived here Tuesday morning so uh, big round of applause to those guys over there. When you lift the lid of a kit that's probably north of £50 you want to be surprised and I am. This box is absolutely crammed with plastic so on first impressions it really offers good value for money. So let's start having a look through what the plastic is like in the box. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve plastic sprues. Fuselage upper section. Clear parts. Fuselage lower section. We've got electronic countermeasure pods times two and drop tanks times two. Photo etch. So it really is the kit that just keeps giving. So we've got the paperwork there, so let's have a look through that first. So we've got the kit instruction booklet, it's black and white, looks to be a photocopy. Turning the page, we've got the parts map knock something off the bench there. So turning the page we've got the parts map and as you can see there's quite a lot in this kit. So it's certainly not going to be a very quick weekend build. Unsurprisingly the assembly starts with the ejector seats which are multi-part affairs. They go into a single cockpit tub with the front and rear compartment with the comb into instrument panels made up from a number of different items there. Side console detail, decals for the instruments should you wish to use them and then we build up the nose gear bay with the cockpit tub sitting on top and that's sandwiched in between the nose section halves there. It's nice to see that we've actually got open electronics bay which is quite commonplace on a Hornet on the ground. Turning the page we've got some holes to make for the additional equipment fitted to the growler on the upper wings and also on the fuselage so just mind you don't miss those. Boarding ladder looks like we can have that deployed or retracted. Lower wing surfaces and again make sure you open the holes. No section coming over to the upper fuselage hopefully the join will be okay. Rear decking, hoods, front cockpit, pizza box for the nose and we've got a complete radar should you wish to uh, depict your radar open there. Canopy open or closed as to be expected of a kit of this quality. Radar open or closed. Some internal detail there for the canopy as well. 
Ray Dome, if you have it open, is detailed as well. So don't forget that the G has no gun, it's been deleted, and that's correctly depicted in part J7, which is a blanking plate for the top of the Ray Dome. So again, kit that keeps giving. Engines times two. Side fuselage parts being built up in step seven. Sort of in a traditional Hornet-esque build sequence. Full length intakes which is nice but unfortunately it looks as though you have no option to display those engines with any open engine covers. You might have to be doing a bit of kit butchery around the rear end if you wanted those on show. Side plates going into the rear fuselage, main gear bay detail, some aerials and then it's onto the nose gear which looks adequately detailed for the scale. Looks like you can pose the launch rail up or down. Main gear is always a complicated affair on the Hornet but that looks to be a single part which is going to make the unit stronger. You've got uh, two sections there to build up so it might be worth just working on those individually so that you don't get the parts mixed up and swapped from side to side. A few smaller details, arms and actuators going in for the undercarriage doors in step 12. 13, undercarriage main gear doors and electronic bays door being added. So if you want that closed I would go way back to step 1 and work on that in the closed configuration before you complete or even start assembly of the model. Repe repeated for the opposite side so you've got the gear doors and the electronics bay as well. Very straightforward and very clear build diagrams. Flaps can be deployed or retracted which is a nice feature adds a lot of dynamic to the model there as well. So we're continuing on in step 16 with the flaps being added. Just note it's got the late ECS pipes. Special fit for the G and wing folds so you've got the electronic countermeasures pods there and some other fairings and bits and pieces. Wings folded or extended and they're added to your waiting fuselage assembly in stage 19. So it does build up quite quick despite the part count. Pylons going on, arrestor hook, jet cans at the end with some some more. I'm going to suggest that these are add-on parts which is why we open the holes up and there for the G over the F and a different spine insert so I'm hoping they all line up correctly. Tail planes and vertical tail rudders can be deflected and it does say just note which position they're going in if the wings are folded. I think they can both inwards. Crew access ladder, quite tricky to assemble that but it will look good once assembled. Twenty four shows the complete airframe whilst 25 onwards uh, the drop tanks, weapons fit, pylons etc and the back page showing where all those weapons fit in terms of their placement on the aircraft. Included is a single sheet of A4 showing where all the airframe stenciling data goes and as that will keep you busy for a couple of sessions at the workbench no doubt. Painting guides are included in full colour on glossy paperwork. So this is the VAQ129. No other details given. And VAQ135. Different markings there as well. And then on the reverse side you've got VAQ130 zappers. And then this expands a little bit to say USS Harry Truman 2016. 
Shadowhawks George H. W. Bush 2010 from VAQ141 and the one that I intend to make with the kit and probably a lot of others is VAQ132 Scorpions 2010 and then we've got decal layout for the rest of the weaponry electronic countermeasures pods so all in all quite a nice little package decals I'm not going to remove those from the plastic but uh, there are two decal sheets in the kit let's just tell you what let's just take a look at those probably going to be a, quite a bit of interest in the markings um, paying £50 plus for a kit and you don't want to be buying aftermarket decals there's a small correction sheet in there as always with Hobby Boss and Trumpeter they are sellotaped so I'll just remove those they look to be really nice so hopefully you can see they were very well printed stencil data just about legible no funny spellings as the norm with the earlier kits quite nice they look as though they're very usable so uh, what I would suggest is if you're in any doubt as to what you know regards setting solutions and things perhaps just use one of the markings options that you're not going to intend to use on the kit and put it on a spare model on an old model just to check how they work you got the other one Again, lovely printing. You got the slime lights cockpit, probably a bit characterised, uh, cartoony, but nonetheless probably better than a lot, including the kit these days. And some nice artwork there overall. So this kit has massive amount of plastic in the box. So I'm not going to go through every sprue. We'll focus on certain important parts of the airframe. So we'll have a look at the upper surface of the fuselage first and the moulding on this is fantastic. We've got loads of multiple rivets. And the, the ECS pipes are more or less hollow. They do go quite a way back. Don't forget to move the injection moulding pips from the tops of the wings. It's not a feature of the aircraft. So the Inevitable question is going to be how does it stack up to its closest rival which I would probably suggest is the main kit So as if by magic We have the main upper surface there as well As you can see they're pretty much identical in terms of panel layout and shape And I would say just on comparison that the Hobby Boss kit just has the edge over the Meng one in terms of detail size wise from tip of the jack cans to the nose is very similar there's no noticeable difference Hobby Boss kit is cheaper and I have both the Meng E and F and perhaps I was a bit hasty in buying those but it will be interesting nonetheless to be able to build them both up one thing I have noticed is the different spine inserts on the G which would mean that Hobby Boss have gone down the multi-option route from their tooling point of view whereas Meng have done it as a solid piece so it's a less, one less joint to fill up looking at the two the spine seems a bit flatter and wider on the main kit. I don't know if you can see that on camera. But not being a Hornet expert, I'm really not that fussed. They both look like Super Hornets to me. They're both going to be enjoyable builds. So basically whichever one's available, you're not going to go far wrong. I think with the main kit, you've got a few more options in the box there. In terms of early or late style ECS pipes etc but they're really going to be hard pushed to tell the difference on the finished model but this area does look significantly different 
on the two kits. Whether that's just because they're not built and there's more plastic in those areas, I don't know. But the Meng one does look a bit flatter and wider than the Hobby Boss kit. So I always sit on the fence in terms of accuracy. I'm not going to start measuring them against scale plans. So I'll leave that up to you, the modeler, and your budget and which one that you prefer to go with. Hopefully I can feature both in future video builds and we can have a look at the build process for each. But let's concentrate on the Hobby Boss kit at the moment. After all, it is that kit that we're reviewing. I'm not going to unbag the sprues. There's just far too many. And like I said, we don't want to be here an hour talking about this kit. But cockpit detail is, is reasonable. You can see through the plastic there. There's those spine inserts. So it'll be interesting to see how those fit and whether they dis detract from the overall build, whether there's got to be any filling, sanding or shape discrepancies. Undercarriage sprues, probably generic with their E and F kit. Uh, like I said, not seen those so can't comment. Nonetheless, does look to be quite nice. Knowing Hobby Boss, your clean up is going to be critical because they do mount the sprue gates on the mating surfaces but other than that should be a fuss free build one thing you do get with a hobby boss kit is an ample supply of weaponry so there's two sprues here with GBUs, JDAMs various AIM-120s etc included another sprue uh, another couple of sprues, generic to most Hobby Boss kits, and we've got some buddy pods for the refueling. We've got uh, multiple ejector racks, etc. There, so welcome addition to the spare box, spares box. We've got Hornet pylons, etc. There. More interesting bits. You've got the tail planes and wings and the side fuse larges. So we'll have a look at this sprue because we can have a look at the weapons or the electronics bay should I say. So the electronics bay is quite well detailed and certainly not incorporated in the main kit. Panel detail is lovely. The moulding on this is really really nice. I'm quite surprised. Hobby Boss have come a long way since the last one I built. I think the last Hobby Boss kit that I actually built was the Lanson. But that looks really nice. I'm assuming there's jet cans in here and uh, adequately protected, which is a quite a, a quite a well-known trait from Hobby Boss and Trumpeter. They like to protect the parts, and it all gives a, a nice feeling to when you open the kit other than them being like some manufacturers just push them all into one bag so we'll take care just to open these so you've got the jet cans some targeting pods there wheels etc all very well the seats are single piece and they do look quite nice as well there's plenty of resin alternatives out there if you want a little bit more detail and there's those characteristic wing pods so we'll, we'll wrap those back up. Tailorons, stabilizers, call them what you want, uh, single piece, and there's all the flaps for the trailing edge of the wings. Radome, radar, got some quite nice detail on that radar. You can see that. Those gear bay, some lovely renditions of the air vents on there, on the side of the intake. Quite a nice overall feel to the kit. Last sprue in the kit, we've got some intake sections and the lower sections of the wing and forward section or under section of the, the wing if you like that uh, includes the leading edge root extensions so there we have 
Hobby Boss's 148 scale EA 18G growler. It's a project in a box. There's certainly not going to be a very quick weekend build. There's a lot of detail there and a kit that certainly deserves attention to detail. And I'm sure that any modeler who uh, takes the time in preparing the, the model correctly and getting that fit perfect will be rewarded with an absolutely stunning replica of the Growler in 48 scale. It's also a good stepping off point should you want to uh, perhaps open one of those engine access bays and add a bit more detail in there with the two engines included in the kit. You've got plenty of additions to the spares box if you're a US Navy fan or a US uh, Air Force fan, even that. There's plenty of US weaponry in the box to keep you going. Hopefully the decals will be up to scratch. Um, they certainly look nice in the kit. Hopefully the build process will be what we as modellers should expect from a brand new CAD designed and tooled model. Hopefully I can bring you this as a video build. It falls slightly outside the remit that I set Rick Scale Model Fix in the fact that it would be a major project and probably run to 9, 10, 12 parts. Nonetheless, if you want to see that, then I'm prepared to do it. It's going to be a lot of work, but I'm sure that hard work will be rewarded. So everybody, until next time, please look after yourselves, stay well, and take care.